Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. IRS warns taxpayers of new filing season scams involving Form W-2 wages. Those filing fake returns face potential penalties investigation. W-2 filing season scam. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, honestly, my employer has actually been colluding with the government this whole time. Giving not only me a W-2 form, but they've actually been giving a W-2 form to the IRS as well. I mean, can you believe that? This is supposed to be a self-reporting tax system for crying out loud. Like, I, I should have an A-B relationship with my employer and then like, a, like an A-C relationship with the IRS, you know? And a relationship about A without A should never be. Don't you see? Yes. Don't you dare see. Go harassing my employer B like that. Anyways, sorry if that was a little confusing. My producer, Phil, keeps distracting me right before I start recording by asking me a math question. He's like, one and two and three and four. It's like, whatever, Phil. What are you talking about? Why don't you just say ten? Honestly, like, right before we start recording is no time to ask for help with your math homework. Plus, I know you already know the answer to the math question, Phil. Because you ask me the same exact question like three times a day, always right before we start recording. Which is like the worst time. I mean, I'm telling you. Like, like, it's almost as bad as the IRS making me fill out a tax return when they already colluded with everyone I've had a financial interaction with. So they clearly already know all the answers about my taxes. As well as my sex life. Just, just kidding. But, but, seri but seriously, dang government, they're all the same, I tell you. I mean, it's, it's just like when a police officer pulls you over and then they ask, w would you tell me how fast you were going? And like, I think they do it on purpose and you, you have to just sit there and resist the irresistible urge of saying like, dude, you're the one with the speed gun right in your hand. Why don't you tell me how fast I was going? Because I'm pretty sure you already know the answer and you have no intentions of relying on my answer. To... And then they're like, do you think the law doesn't apply to you? And it's just, just give me the ticket for crying out. Anyways, whatever. On to the news. IR 2023-38, March 3rd, 2023, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service issued a consumer alert today to warn taxpayers of new scams that urge people to use wage information on a tax return to claim false credits in hopes of getting a big refund. One scheme, which is circulating on social media, encourages people to use tax software to manually fill out Form W-2 wage and uh, tax statement. There's a link to that here and include false income information. So in this W-2 scheme, scam artists suggest people make up large income and withholding figures as well as the employer it is coming from. Scam artists then instruct people to file the bogus tax return electronically in hopes of getting a substantial refund, sometimes as much as five figures due to the large amount of withholding. So let's just kind of recap how this might work. So let's think about the income tax system in general and what this kind of scam system might do within it. So we have an income tax system. We uh, pay taxes when income is generated. The IRS has an incentive to try to kind of look over the shoulder of people that are generating income. When we think about a business situation, any interaction that we have, there's going to be someone that has the revenue side of the transaction and the other person that's going to have an expense side of the transaction. One person or one business is buying goods and services and paying for them. The other is uh, selling the goods and services. And if it's a free market transaction, you would expect those two sides to be equivalent value uh, between the two of them. The IRS has the leverage on the payer side because of an income tax system. So they're going to be able to kind of force the payer to be able to give them information about who they pay. So in an employer-employee situation, they have the leverage over the employer to force the employer to not only give the IRS the information, but also to actually withhold the taxes before they give the taxes to uh, the employee. So it's actually, from the IRS perspective, that's a beautiful system, right? Now you've made the employer the tax reporter, not only that, but actually the tax collective. You've made them the arm of your tax collection arm. 
Now, so that means that the IRS, when you file the, the W-2 form, they already have the W-2 form. So if you file something differently, then obviously they would know that. Now you could say, well, what if then I, I filed a W-2 form like I was an employer with false information on it? Why would I do that? Because the W-2 form usually is reporting income because I can then report a larger amount of withholdings than the income. And therefore, even though I would then have to reflect that income on my taxes, I would have this big withholding that would offset it. Now, that kind of scheme might work like in the short run, because then the IRS would have the, the W-2 form that basically ties to the employer. But there's no way that that W-2 form is going to hold up for long because there's no other information. The employer is not filing any tax return. Uh, related to related to it, right? So there, there's no actual other supporting document of the W-2 if you just made up the corporation because there's no actual corporation that's actually filing tax returns. So you would think that without even an intensive audit, a little bit of time would catch that problem. However, it might st w w even on an automated system without even like a manual audit kind of. It's not a, it's not the most sophisticated type of of a tax scheme. But you would think maybe in the short run, they don't, they don't you know, catch it automatically in the short run, possibly filing or giving out a, a refund. Now, again, I think that's, that's really a short-sighted type of thing to do, even if it worked, because, because uh, it's clearly, you know, you can be audited at least three years into the future. And if there's fraud that's been committed, on the IRS, then they, I believe they basically have like an, an, an unlimited amount of time to come back and audit. So you're basically on the hook. You have to worry about that, you know, forever into the future. And obviously if they were to, to, to come back, which you would think they would at some point in time, then uh, they're, they're going to be charging you. You would think you're, you're possibly liable, not only for just not paying your taxes, but basically that's a clearly intentionally fraudulent thing. Intent to to kind of deceive so i would think the people pushing this kind of fraud the way it might work is the people that are pushing others to report and do this type of fraud are not the actual one and then they're going to try to get a benefit you give them part of the refund that you get right so that so the people that are trying to push this fraud are probably trying to get people to actually file the tax return other than them right because then the other person's on the hook for the social security and then they get the refund and they're and they leave or whatever uh before the before everything hits the fan when the iris you know gets gets around to fixing the problem when they fix the problem they're obviously going to go back to the one who filed the social security number so if anybody's trying to convince you to file a fraudulent return and possibly give them part of the money for their genius scam or something like that that's really not a good idea because the person who has their social security number on the return is the one, you know, on the hook. So, so I would believe that would probably be the way these, the, that scam might work. They're trying to convince other people to file this return in a very pretty, much, pretty unsophisticated kind of way. Uh, and then, and then uh, when, the, when it hits the fan sometime in the, in the next year, even if they get the refund, the person that convinced them will be gone or something like that. That's my guess, but I don't know. The IRS, along with the Security Summit partners, there's a link to that here, and the tax industry and the states are actively watching for the scheme and others. Uh, in addition, the IRS works with payroll companies and large employers, as well as Social Security Administration, to verify W-2 information. So with National Consumer Protection Week starting Monday, the IRS and Summit partners warn people not to fall for these, for these scams. Uh, quote, we are seeing signs this, the, of this scam is increasing, and we worry that innocent taxpayers uh, could be at risk of being tempted into falling into a trap that puts them at risk of financial and criminal penalties, end quote, said acting IRS Commissioner Jug Doug O'Donnell, quote, the IRS and Security Summit partners remind people there's no secret way to get free money or a big refund. People should not make up income and try to submit a fraudulent tax return in hopes of getting a huge refund, end quote. Obviously, that is that's not going to be generally good and anyone's convincing someone to do that again the they're, they're probably trying to convince someone else to do it because they don't want to use their own social security number uh to do it because again it's something they're probably going to catch that kind of 
that doesn't seem very sophisticated to me. That the, I mean, so two, two verifications of this scheme are also being seen by the IRS, both involving misusing Form W-2 wage and information in hopes of generating a large refund. One variation involves people using Form 7202, credits for sick leave and family leave for certain self-employed individuals. There's a link to that here. To claim a credit based on income earned as an employee, not as a self-employed individual. These credits were available for self-employed individuals for 2020, 2021 during the pandemic. They are not available for 2022 tax returns. Now, obviously, some of these laws that went into place during COVID, anytime there's this big substantial change in laws and then obviously an, an attempt to support people by give, just throwing money out there, obviously that is, is, a, is an environment ripe for scams. So they're kind of reeling in some of these new laws that went out there. And, and, uh, but there, you know, we still have the remnants of that whole thing which which uh, leads to less stability, uncertainty, which leads to people uh, taking advantage of systems oftentimes. So a similar variation involves people making up fictional employees employed in their household and using Schedule H, Form 1040 Household Employment Taxes, to try and claim a refund based on false sick and family wages they never paid. So the form is designed to report household employment taxes if a taxpayer hired someone to do housework and those wages were subject to Social Security, Medicare, or FUTA taxes, or if the employer withheld federal income tax from those wages. So household employee reporting and in that case. So the IRS reminds people who try uh, this that they face a wide range of penalties. There's a link to that here. This may include frivolous return penalty of $5,000. There's a link to that here. Filers uh, also run the risk of criminal prosecution for filing false tax returns. So that's the thing that's really kind of scary with it because you would think that that, that kind of just fragrant, you know, you're just making up a W-2 form and putting wages on it as if you're an employer when you're not an employer. That seems like uh, that pretty easy to possibly prove intention. So if you're intentionally not just frivolousness, but if you're intentionally fraud stuff, then you would think that could be a criminal type of thing. And, uh, and that's not good. <laughs> Typical, usually the penalties are harsher for, for fraud on the, uh, on the law. So in any case, for anyone who has participated in one of these schemes, there are several options that the IRS recommends. People can amend a previous tax return or consult with a trusted tax professional. Now, most of the times, if you've been, if you got sucked into something, the problem with, it's just like any lie, right? You get into this web of lies. Now you're saying, okay, I filed a fraudulent tax return. Someone admitted to, you know, convinced me to do it. And now I feel like an idiot because now I'm scared and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do anything. So now I either go down the route of just continually in the, the web of lies, or does the IRS give me a way out? Now, usually the IRS is, you would think the law would be put up in such a way that, that they're going to try to encourage people to amend the, the problem if they recognize the problem or if, or if they say, okay, yeah, that was bad. I'm going to change it. So usually you're better off uh, in that kind of situation, amending the tax return and saying, and then you're, which means you're basically admitting, you know, yeah, I've, I basically lied on this tax return kind of, you know, but, but if you amend it, then you took the action and that's usually you're going to be better served under the law typically in that case. But it's kind of a scary situation when, when you, when you, when you have to be in that kind of position. So uh, you might consult a tax professional as well uh, just, to, just to do that, but that could be difficult too because then you have to say, yeah, some, someone scammed me or I thought this was a good idea. Probably wasn't. <laughs> How do I get out of it now and whatnot and so on. So in any case, there's links to that stuff here. There'll be a link to this in the description.